Hi, I'm Jacob, one of the owners of j and Pool Company, and today we are talking pool chemistry. Uh, now with pool chemistry, it is a very often neglected but extremely important aspect of swimming pools. Uh, one of the main neglects come because you look at your pool, it looks crystal clear. Does that mean you have perfect chemistry? No. The only way you know if you have perfect chemistry is if you test. All right, now we are professionals, so we use the K2005 Taylor Test Kit. Uh, however, you can also use test strips. Uh, there's other drip tests as well, um, but you need to be testing your water. You need to test it on a weekly basis. Uh, so today we're gonna go through the basics of testing that water. So when testing water, it's extremely important uh, to one, turn your system off first because I don't want the chemistries to be altered by being too close to a jet. Two, when I'm grabbing my water, I want to go at least elbows deep into the water. And the first thing I'm going to be testing is my chlorine levels. All right, so I'm going to fill it up right to this line right here. I'm going to grab my R001 agent and I'm going to do five drops. I want to be straight up and down with these drops. Now I'm going to grab my R002 agent, and I'm gonna do five drops. Now, as I'm putting these drops in, I should see it turning pink if I have chlorine in this pool. All right, whenever I'm looking at my chemical output or my color on this, I always put it up towards the sky because that gives me a true color reading. So when I look at this, I've got no chlorine in this water. I'm at zero chlorine levels, so that's not good. I need to get this up to about two to four parts per million. The next thing we'll be testing is our pH levels. Uh, with our pH levels, it lets us know if our water is too acidic or too basic. Uh, much like a lemon, if it comes out yellow, it's gonna be too acidic, where more like a grape, if it's more purple, it'll be more basic. Uh, our goal is we want it to be uh, very neutral. That way, when we get in the water, it feels comfortable on our eyes, uh, as well as it's the healthiest environment for the swimmer uh, and the pool itself. So let's see what our pH is here. We'll be taking five drops of the R004. It's got the red top. All right, and once again, I'm gonna put it up to the sky so I get a true reading. All right, and looking at this, I would call this either a 7.6 or a 7.7. So perfect is 7.5, so I'm pretty close to the parameters I wanna be at. Uh, so I'm close to a neutral pH. All right, next thing we'll be testing is our pool alkalinity. What we want is a range between 80 and 120. Uh, what this does for us is it acts as a buffer on our pH. I'm gonna take this right to the 25 milliliter mark. Now, this is all the green tops. All right, so first product I'm gonna use is the R007, and I'm gonna do two drops of this, and that's a chlorine neutralizer just to give us an accurate test. Then I'm gonna do five drops of the R008. Now, this is the fun part. We are going to count these drops. So every drop that I put in will be 10 parts per million. And what we're doing is we're gonna wait for it to turn pink. Once it turns pink, that'll tell us our alkalinity level. So that's when I see the transition. All right, so six drops it took to go pink, that means my alkalinity in this pool is at 60 parts per million. Ideal is 80 to 120, so I need to add some bicarb to this pool to get it to the proper ranges. All right, so the next thing we'll be testing is our calcium levels. Uh, calcium levels are often neglected in the swimming pool, and it's such an important item of chemistry. Uh, what you want your calcium levels to be is between 200 and 400 parts per million. Um, water craves calcium, so if it doesn't get it from the water itself, it'll start pulling it from everything that the water touches. Uh, this can be a big problem with concrete pools because it'll start pulling from your shell, causing corrosion. Also is one of the biggest factors with your saturation index, uh, which is what we use to actually keep proper chemistry. So the first uh, one I'll be using is, it is all the blue tops. Taylor makes it easy on us as far as the chemicals go, they color coordinate. But I'm gonna take the R0010, this is my calcium buffer, and I'm gonna do 20 drops. Now I'm gonna swirl that. And this will be another color changing test. Now I'm gonna do uh, five drops of my calcium indicator liquid. Now once again, I'm gonna swirl this. Let's see all that blue break up. And now my hardness reagent. This is gonna be another one I'm gonna count. And what I'm looking for is a color change. 
Now you can see the color change, I've moved to blue right at 19 drops. So that tells me that my calcium level is 190 because I multiply that by 10. So ideally I want to be between 200 and 400, but more importantly, I want a perfect saturation index, uh, so I'll calculate that. Next thing we'll be checking are our cyanuric acid levels. Uh, this is a stabilizer for our swimming pool, uh, but what this acts like is a sunscreen for our chlorine. Uh, it keeps our chlorine from evaporating and dissipating uh, in the water, uh, allows it to hold and become more potent. Now I'll use this little piece right here, and I'm gonna fill it up to the seven mark. And my perfect ranges for cyanuric are gonna be right around 30 parts per million. If I get too high, it actually has a negative impact on the chlorine. And if I'm too low, it has a negative impact on the chlorine. So you need to find that sweet spot. All right, so now I'm gonna take the cyanuric acid reagent and I'm gonna fill up to that 14 mark. Now this one is a turbidity test. It's all about how transparent it is and how long it is till I can see that dot, and I'm gonna count that level. Now you gotta shake this up for 20 seconds. All right, so now I'm gonna look down and I see my black dot, and I'm gonna keep adding this until I can no longer see my black dot. So I can still see my black dot even when I get to the 30 mark. I would say we're probably pretty close to zero, but either way, I know that I'm less than 30. Uh, so we need to add cyanuric acid condition or conditioner or stabilizer to this swimming pool. All right, the last thing we'll be testing is salt levels today. Not all pools are salt pools, um, but if you do have a salt system, generally your ranges wanna be anywhere between 2,800 parts per million uh, and 3,600 parts per million. Always refer to the manufacturer instructions on your cell for that perfect level. The Hayward system at 3,400 parts per million. We're gonna take this tube and we're gonna carry it right to the 10 milliliter. All right, and the orange is what I use for my salt testing. This is our chromate indicator. So we're gonna do one drop of this. All right, and now I'm counting these drops. Every drop that I count is actually 20 parts per million. So I'm waiting for it to turn almost a peachy color. Okay, so now I've turned a peachy color. So this is showing that my salt levels in this pool are right around 2,000 parts per million. Uh, which is way too low for this pool, uh, which is also why I don't have any chlorine in the pool. Uh, because if my salt levels are too low, I'm not gonna produce chlorine. 